Hello, hello, welcome back guys. So Home Depot actually reported earnings and we're gonna be taking a little bit of a closer look at what they did. Now, this is a known home improvement retailer pretty much and um, it's up 1% today. We're gonna examine the financials and see whether it makes sense to buy the company. You will see the max chart here. It's a company that has been going up and up and up and up. And lately it has also received a little bit of a slump with the overall market going down about 30% for the last year. Well, I guess most of the companies have, so this could be happening at some point for Home Depot as well. And so this may actually give us an interesting entry point. We will examine it. But uh, I do want to take a little bit of a look at uh, the company's earnings report. So what did they actually report? And you will see here that they did raise forecast despite slow spring and inflation. Interesting. Let's examine the details. Now, first quarter sales improved despite a slow spring start, as you'll see. And they did raise their full year guidance. Another very interesting thing. Now, revenue increased about 4% to almost 39 billion, which actually beaten, which has actually beaten Wall Street expectations. They actually expected lower here. And a very interesting thing, um, they actually opened new stores, climbed 2.2 uh, globally and 1.7 in the US. So that's very nice because it points to a retailer, you know, creating more stores, having more health overall. So the business is doing well. Now, uh, there was a qu quarterly sales that had uh, slow, the slowest pace, uh, pace of growth in the last two years. And that will happen for some quarters. That's very, very normal. You can see that. But uh, as, the, as they said, as the company said, they did, not exp they did not see an enormous collapse in demand. As many households are still willing to invest in and improve their homes. But there is a softening, is what they're saying here. Okay, so Home Depot earned uh, the 4.23 billion or 4.09 per share for the quarter. And they topped analyst estimates projections of 3.77, uh, 67. So this is actually much, much better than the projected uh, projections here. And um, a year earlier, the Atlanta company earned 4.1 billion. So they are doing better, actually, and significantly better at that. Very interesting. Now, existing home sales fell 2.7% uh, last month from, from February, February to a seasonal adjusted annual rate of uh, 5.77 million here. Interesting. So let's take a look at uh, what uh, the actual financials are telling us about Home Depot, which seems to be uh, doing well in terms of the earnings report. But what are they doing in terms of the financials? Now, the P ratio of the company sitting at 19.2 here, relatively low. We typically like to see these companies below 20 and sometimes significantly below 20. This is near that. And the price to free cash flow ratio is a little bit elevated, sitting, sitting at 27.3. So we'll see what, it, what the actual projection in, in terms of our stock evaluation tool is. Now, the outstanding shares have been going down a little bit. I love to see that because the company is buying back shares. And total liabilities to free cash flow is almost where I'd like it to be, near 5 and less. Now, the revenue growth has been increasing with the net income growth and the free cash flow growth. But uh, the total equity growth has been going down. I'm assuming this has to do with the... Uh, uh, returns that the company are trying to achieve here and um, yeah the debt to equity ratio is actually negative because the equity is uh, negative of course but the current ratio is actually also uh, pretty pretty neat I mean normally we want it more than one or 1.2 so that's fair but um, I'm actually surprised by this return on equity that I'm seeing here it looks like the company has been uh, not doing great in terms of the returns on equity interesting now, if you keep examining a company like Home Depot and you take a look at uh, their balance sheet and their income statement, which we're going to do now, you will see that, for, for instance, their balance sheet points to a company that has negative equity right now and it's actually going from negative to positive. So it's, it's within this territory. Now, remember, when we're talking about return on equity, what is the formula? It is the net income that the company generates divided by the total equity of the company. Basically, how much we are making for the equity of the company. Uh, that's, that's the return on equity. And so once the company gets negative, we're, you're going to get a very negative number. And once it gets positive, you're going to get a positive number. And uh, because companies of this sort potential like Home Depot use debt as leverage, they could be making quite a lot of net income when compared to their total uh, equity. And as you will see here, uh, the net income of uh, Home Depot has been 16 billion, for example. And if you take a look at their balance sheet, 
and you go back to 2021, for example, this is uh, total equity that is positive. And so we, when we do the division, we're getting a very positive number, but uh, next year we're getting a very negative number. And so this is why you're going to be seeing weird numbers in terms of the equity of the company, the, the return on equity of the company for this one. It's going up and down a lot in terms of their uh, total, uh, as a total equity section here. And that really, really affects the returns. Now, the thing is, um, uh, the revenues of the company from 100 billion to 151 billion here, they have been increasing and the net income has been increasing, doubling pretty much uh, a nice thing to see. But if we take a look at the balance sheet here, you will see that what the company is doing is uh, incurring a lot of debt. The long term debt has been increasing and increasing and that is what causes the total liabilities to go, to, to go sky high. As you'll see here, the total debt gets increased uh, pretty much every year and the total liabilities, this adds uh, to the total liabilities, of course, this is about 46 billion here, adding a lot to the total liabilities, making it higher than the total assets of the company. And thus the total stockholders equity goes down and goes negative. Now that's not necessarily bad as long as you can uh, use your debt in order to make substantial gains here. But um, it's leverage and uh, you know if interests go higher, if we, ca if we get into a recession, then this may actually cause some problems to the company, especially if they don't have a lot of cash. Now, if we take a look at the cash of the company, they don't have a lot of cash. They have like 2.3 billion. So compared to the debt that they have, they are not having that much cash. So they are a company that's actually running on current profit. And uh, you will see here that uh, their net income has been increasing along with the net cash by, provided by operating activities, as you'll see. And uh, if you take a look at the free cash flow has been increasing as well from 10 to 14 billion right now. And it seems to be increasing pretty much every year for the most part. Company pay is paying a little bit of dividend, but uh, is also using some cash for investing, which is a nice thing to see, of course. For the most part is uh, capital expenditures and investing in the markets a little bit and uh, financing activities uh, paying back some debt the company does have quite some debt so it's good that they are paying back some of it and that is some substantial payment actually right here and it doesn't look like they're getting extra debt which i like to see yeah i would like them to offload some debt here now uh, we do want to examine the stock evaluation tool and see what kind of price uh, we should be buying this company for if we want to buy this one and you will see that the revenue growth has been 10, 12, and uh, 14 for the most part, with some years that have been um, less. But we do want to go lower here. We're going to go 6, 8, and 10. And the net income margins, uh, they're about the same every year. 8, 9, and 10 is what makes the total sense here. The free cash flow margins, again, very, very similar. We're going to go, uh, uh, let's go actually 90, uh, 100, and 110. 13% for our annual return. And let's uh, hit calculate. And as you are see, it's as you'll see, it's our high estimates here that are giving us a green sign. Yet our medium and low one and low ones are actually giving us a red sign, meaning that the company is still a little bit expensive for what we'd like to get it at. And uh, based on the fact that the company is uh, very very debt leveraged, I would be a little bit cautious about uh, getting extra extra stock here for the co from this company as, at this price. I'd like to get it at a lower price and uh, probably even significantly lower price company remember is a lot uh, is very very leveraged here actually i think uh, pretty much um, wanting to take the, their equity down in order to get extra debt and uh, you can kind of see that they have been increasing their debt quite some <clears throat> now they do pay a dividend yield as well which uh, for which we haven't talked about and it may be interesting 2.3 percent the free cash flow payout ratio is 50 percent the payout ratio from the net income is 43 percent this is very fair but let's see historically what i have done so yeah, that's a good thing. The company's uh, dividends have been increasing historically, so they haven't cut down on dividends. And uh, that makes a ton of sense because they can actually serve it based on the free cash flow. Because uh, uh, again, remember, it's about 50% of their free cash flow uh, that they generated last year, pretty much. And so I'm a little bit uh, cautious about this company potentially having some issues if we enter some sort of a recession or something of that sort. Yet, uh, I can see what they are doing here. It looks like they are buying back shares like crazy. They are getting extra debt, uh, using it as leverage. And uh, they are doing well. Overall, they are doing well. It's just that I feel it's a little bit more expensive than what I would like it to be. And so if it goes maybe towards 200 bucks or something, then it may be very, very worthwhile to add some to my portfolio. 
Thank you for watching the video. Tell me what you think about Home Depot. And uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. Remember, you can get access to this tool just by becoming a Patreon. You can find links in the description box below this video. And thank you for watching again. And uh, I'll see you in the very, very next one. In the meantime, take a look at this video that I made earlier about JD.com, which reported earnings just a few hours ago. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye-bye.